Hello and welcome to Unprofessional Engineering. My name is James. You got Luke. Luke, we're kicking off a new series here, thanks to your giant brain. I know. Looking at the seven modern wonders of the world. You're welcome, everybody. <laughs> and what, what are we starting with today, Luke? So we're starting with uh, chicken pizza. Chicken pizza. AKA Chitza Nitsa. Ah, very good. Uh, so whenever my brother and I went to Cancun in 99, we did a tour and mm -hmm. we went there and everybody on the bus was like having a super hard time pronouncing the name of the, the place. And the, the tour guide was, he said, everybody say chicken pizza. And everybody said chicken pizza. And he's like, now say Chitza Nitsa. And it was like, mm. it was the easiest way to remember Look how to say Chitza. But in my extensive research, James, I found that it's pronounced multiple different ways. Um, like I, I saw one where it was Chien Itza, um, which I don't think I, is right. I wonder if it's like Chichen Itza's as close as Americans can get. It, it and probably that's is. like where they say, okay, it's good enough. You yeah, know, I feel like that happens a lot. It probably is. Yeah. So, so, so what do you got about uh, Chichen Itza, James? Well, I, I have a lot about it. I know you'd love you the histories. I do. So so let me start with the histories, okay? And I guess I have a few fun facts. So Chichen Itza, chicken pizza, was a Mayan city. There, I guess, is it still? I guess no one lives there. But no. the remains of it are still at on the Yucatan Peninsula in Mexico. What is it like? How long of a drive from Cancun is it? A couple hours? Uh, if I recall, it's it a was, while. It was like two and a half or three hours on on an old rickety bus for yeah, us at least yeah so two fun facts for you to start it actually remains an active archaeological site today luke which is pretty cool so we could go play indiana jones there together and then write it off as a podcast expense hmm? i think that's a great idea i think so as well fun fact number two the ancient Mayan city of Chichen Itza was discovered in 1841 by two explorers, John Lloyd Stevens and Frederick Catherwood. What I think is interesting about that, I, and I mean, it's only kind of so fun. That's only like 180 years ago that it was discovered, but it wasn't like lost until like the 1400s, 1500s. So what happened in those 300 years that we totally lost this location and then it showed back up again? My guess is, it's, so the research I found was they, 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 uh, they eventually abandoned the city. I forget the exact time yeah. frame that they abandoned the city. Um, but my guess is, I don't know, like overgrowth, people didn't have chainsaws to cut the trees down. But I mean, I guess it was so desolate, like it was so abandoned by people, that whole region for hundreds of years that it just went away and everyone forgot yeah. that they went and visited there and when they were exploring that's so weird to me anyways it was named a unesco world heritage site in 1988 so a while ago and then in 2007 it was voted as which is why we're doing this episode one of the new seven wonders of the world which i agree it's pretty interesting so something interesting about the um uh, excuse me, uh, the UNESCO stuff. I thought I've heard like UNESCO, like World Heritage Site. Yeah, I've heard yeah. all that stuff before, but I never really understood um, like how they got designated. Okay, um, how do that? So, so a, a couple of things. I'm not going to read through all of these, but there's a handful of like criteria that goes into the selection. I honestly a, thought you were going to say, yeah, I didn't look into how. No, 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 I did. I did. <laughs> um, so, and, and there's one, I hate when they use Roman numerals. Uh, oh, I know. There's like 10. Once you get past three, I'm no yeah, good. X is 10, right? <laughs> I think so there's so. 10. Okay, so there's 10. So, uh, so the number one, it, it has to represent a masterpiece of human creative genius. Wow. So clearly this does because it's subjective. They it, it's very subjective because if you think about the timing of when they were building these amazing temples yeah. that like synced up with astrological calendars and all the stuff Nuts. we'll get into in a minute. Yeah. Uh, literally folks over in Europe were like they were barbarians. They were like you know what I mean like timing wise there was literally zero culture happening then and these yeah. people were building these amazing 
you know, uh, structures. Uh, so, so that's one. Um, it has to bear a un- it, it it has to bear a unique or at least I can't read these words uh, testimony to cultural tradition to a civilization which is living or which is disappeared. So it has to like celebrate a, uh, a, a heritage. And then okay, uh, one more, and this is interesting. Uh, it has to contain a superlative natural phenomenon or area of exceptional natural beauty and aesthetic importance. And I've been there. You were there too, right? Mm-hmm. You visited. Yep. Uh, it is a pretty weirdly beautiful place. Like just, just to like, you see some of the carvings and some of the different things on the buildings is I, I thought it was pretty amazing and, and a, a really beautiful area. So that beauty is less about the like natural surroundings and more about the beauty of the structure itself. I, I, suppose, I think so. Or maybe a little bit of both. Yeah. Okay. That's interesting. I didn't know how they come up with this or how they're named. Fun fact for you though, Luke, UNESCO means United Nations Education, Scientific, and Cultural Organization. So it's basically like STEM for the UN, right? That's what I, that's kind of what I gathered it as. No, I, I guess. I guess so. Um, Chichen Itza is a Mayan or comes from the Mayan language, and it means at the mouth of the well of the Itza. That seems like some Indiana Jones stuff, doesn't it? Well, the Itza was the people. It was. Uh, it yeah. Was. So, so chi they were is an ethnic mouth. group of Mayans. Yeah. Yes. yeah chi, chi is mouth. Chen is wells, and Itza is the Mayan tribe that settled there. Is what I found. I heard that. I heard. I read that the Itza weren't really the first people that were there either. They kind of showed up, and they're like, "Yeah, this is our joint now." Sorry, original Itza, not Itza ins. We're taking this place over. So, you know, rise of power, took it over, became a giant capital in the area. Uh, According to Britannica, which was one of my sources, that's a good one. Britannica, it seems as though the city had started before Itza, like I said, in that they invaded it around the 10th century. So a lot of the stuff was there, but the really big, impressive buildings that everyone knows, like the giant temple that we're going to discuss and some of the other things, those were actually built by the Itza. Uh, once they took over the crazy thing that i saw was the the span of time like the Mm -hmm. whole city so it was 550 to 1550 was the the rough length of time they estimated that that yeah area was was populated with people before it got abandoned so that's ridiculous yeah that they were building these structures and they were there for that amount of time as well. I just, I thought that was an interesting time. I think that's cool. I also think it's interesting that, well, we'll get into this a little bit later, but basically nobody knows why they left. It seems like there was just this mass exodus and they decided to become smaller tribes instead of giant localized cities, which is kind of weird. Uh, One more fun fact for you, Luke, the city is also known as the city of the water sorcerers which is pretty sweet. What a cool name, Water Sorcerers. I don't know. Do you want to talk about the cenotes, the buildings? Because I have some stuff on the water. Um, real quick, let me just spew out oh, yeah. a few oh, yeah. more Sorry. facts yeah. here. Yeah, you got all your... Founded, I saw roughly 400 to maybe even 600 AD. Okay. Um, some sites said about 400 to 450, some said about 600. So, you know, give or take those 200 years. Um, was one of the biggest Mayan civilizations. It had a really condensed two square mile area that was packed with buildings and structures. And then it sprawled out to a 25 square kilometer uh, footprint, we'd say, of the city. That's giant. That's like thousands of years ago. They said at the height, this was a city with 35,000 people in it. That's not so. Yeah. In the middle of a jungle. That's so crazy. With I know. no with no access to water, the reason why they were there was these cenotes. We'll talk about in a little bit, but like it wasn't like there was a natural water source nearby. I like it. It just seemed the odd. Cenotes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, and then I guess the last thing that I'll say is that you know it's really impressive because of the terrain they're building on. If you've ever been there, you know it's kind of rocky. It's pretty rough. Uh, probably tough to move these giant rocks around. Also they didn't have the technology that we have today, obviously. In fact, it's thought that they didn't even use the wheel 
for assisting and building any of these structures, which is super crazy to me. Um, if you want to find out more about how it was built, the specifics, stuff like that, check out our episode on the Mayans, as well as the Mayans, Aztecs, and Egyptians in our Civilization Smackdown series we did. I, I, I think totally that was about, about that. 200 episodes ago, so that makes oh. sense. Uh, Luke, before we get into the famous buildings that are out there, let's take a break for a word from our sponsor. UNESCO. That's who I was going with too, but no, it is not UNESCO. <laughs> we do have shout outs though. Shout out number one is Tessa B. You mentioned in an episode that you would like to learn more about cricket. You know, that sport that you hit. I said that? Ball. I did. <laughs> okay. A cricket is a small bug similar to a grasshopper. The main difference is that a cricket is much smaller and has longer antennas. Oh, she's being sarcastic. I see how she is. Yeah, she is. Also, like I like stickers and love great British baking shows. Um, also, what's wrong with civil engineering? So, uh, nothing wrong with civil engineering, Tessa. We just like to pick on them because we're poor engineers. So, we need to make others feel bad about themselves to make us feel better. Does that sound right, Luke? It does. Okay. Next shout out, Trent B. His email was titled, quote, only the best podcast idea ever. I'm a mechanical engineering undergraduate at the University of Arkansas. Go Mud Ducks. Or go Razorbacks for my friend Katie and anyone else who's a sports fan. Um, I'm in my junior year, probably senior year by the time of reading this. I was always interested. That was that was a little hard. That was a right? dig on you for yeah, sure. Yeah, that was. I am always interested to hear the unprofessional take on the world, as well as all the useful and useless yet oddly amusing advice Luke gives during his rants. <laughs> You're the welcome, show world. idea was extracurricular engineering based clubs, societies, and even fraternities or sororities. So I like that. And maybe we could loop in those like I get a ring things but like yeah i think it was canada and somewhere else florida somewhere that did that so anyways thanks for the emails everyone really appreciate it if any of you want to say hello want to give us some uh ideas on episodes want to tell us about cricket or anything else why don't you go ahead and email us at unprofessional engineering at gmail.com and don't forget to subscribe, like, and share. And as always, we love the reviews, and you can tell your smart devices to play the Unprofessional Engineering Podcast anytime. Oh, Luke, real quick. If you also want to show your love of the show, why don't you head over to the Unprofessional Engineering store and pick up some sweet swag? Yeah, because huh? if you don't, you hate us. Fun fact for you, Luke two t-shirts and two stickers have been purchased so far if yes. and whoever you are that bought those things why don't you email us and we will say thank you because I think now we we're should, rich i think we should reimburse them because they were our first purchase wow i don't think i'm gonna go that far maybe you should reimburse them yeah i see how it is moving on luke moving on what do we have next uh so i i think we need to talk about some of the structures that oh, are there yeah. and then some of the surrounding stuff so heck yeah uh so i'm gonna start with the uh the ball court Oh, the ball court. I think the it's, great ball. Yeah, court. I'm not going to say it's like less famous, but it, it's it is. You know, um, it's it's definitely not El Castillo. <laughs> um, what is though? And if you ever watched the movie uh, Apocalypto, Have it's, not. A, it's a, so uh, it's it's a movie about. I I'm fairly certain it's like the Aztec Mayan kind of time frame and it's about these two warring tribes and when i watched that movie it reminded me of this kind of stuff you know like human sacrifice and all this you know kind of warring tribes so would you suggest uh, i watch that it was an interesting movie um eh, it didn't sound like you sold yeah, me sorry it, I mean, it was all right. all right uh so there's this there's this it's called the the I think the great ball court. Yep. And essentially what this is, it's the largest ball court they said in North America. Apparently there's some in other portions of the world. Uh, I didn't see the dimensions, but it's, it's, it's a pretty sizable court and 545 feet long, 223 feet wide. Okay. So imagine that. And then, on the, and then on the walls, I think they said it was like 10 feet up or 12 feet up. They have these giant, 
like circles, not concrete, made out of stone. <laughs> I've been saying concrete whenever I'm referring they're, to this. They're pouring concrete. Yeah, they're, no, they're not pouring concrete. They so, were advanced. <laughs> so on either side, there are these these rings that that they would then hit a 12 pound rubber ball. I didn't understand this. The and math didn't add up to me. It, it didn't add up to me either. But uh, you know, who knows? And apparently, it was kind of like. Um, uh, you weren't allowed to use your hands. So I think it was like soccer or feet. So, or feet. so you had to do it like your elbow, your head, your chest, your knees. Your hip. Um, and you, uh, you essentially passed the ball back and forth to your teammates and had to get points by hitting it through these. A 12 pound ball, nine feet in the air, sounds really difficult. That doesn't make sense. Yeah. So so you play this game, right? And you get all done. You think done they play. played to one? They're like, first team to score wins. Apparently. So. Uh, what I saw for some reason I read about this before like years ago and, and, and I couldn't find the same article but apparently these games would last for like hours and hours and in some cases days and days it was like cricket where the game could extend over multiple days uh, to win the game but here's the kicker and I and I saw but two not the ways because you couldn't ease your feet. exactly I, I saw this said two different ways if you win yeah, I know you get to you you get to be sacrificed was the way that i read it the first time and then i saw another article that said the losers got sacrificed but right you, you wanted to win so that you could then be sacrificed to the gods a great honor right it was an honor because you yeah. won and now i'm getting ready to go i don't know if you I read saw, the same thing I saw about the winners ways as get well. sacrificed. i think it's i think it's one of those things that it's unclear as to someone definitely got sacrificed <laughs> so, we're so, not sure which team it someone was got their heads chopped off yeah yeah Apparently, like on the court walls, there's like pictures of like the victors of the games holding the severed heads of the losing members of the teams. And I don't know, like, I don't think I'd perform well under those conditions. I, I don't remember when <laughs> I went. I remember seeing the observatory and I remember seeing El Castillo and some of the other ones. I don't remember seeing the ball court when we went. I don't know I if it was. I remember seeing that. You did? Okay. Yeah. I know if if you go to, there's a place called, um, I think it's like Ish Kray. Uh, they have a show at the end, like at, at night, where part of the show is people playing this game oh. as well, which is interesting. Um, but I, again, I don't want to get my head chopped off. So there's that. <laughs> um, yeah. Oh, they also said that there's kind of like fun fact about this thing. Uh, there's a standing platform of the temple in the Northern court. And it's possible to hear someone whisper from 150 feet away because of the way that it was designed. So that's yeah, kind of interesting. There's quite a few uh, like acoustical things. Like there's this, I, I think it might be the same area where if you clap yeah. in a certain, and they had in the, the, the tour guide we had had us all do it. And if you clap, it does this, this nine, mm. it, it does this echo over like nine different segments. And it has this kind of really odd sound to it. Um, I can't even make something square and they're designing this without the wheel. Like, I don't, I don't get it. That makes me feel bad. What building do you have next, Luke? Uh, the next one is the observatory Ooh. that uh, I thought this one was really interesting because they, the, the, the what was the name of the observatory? I'm, I, I, I don't have, I don't think I saw a name for it other than the observatory okay. was mentioned a few times, but it, it might have one. I don't yeah, know. and the crazy thing is it actually looked like an observatory. So yeah. um, so it had a domed ceiling, which is crazy that they could build a domed ceiling. And apparently, um, like astrologically, that's a big word for me. That's very large. Um, they, they think that they were looking at Neptune for some reason is what oh, I heard, Neptune. which I didn't even, I didn't Can even we realize, Neptune? I didn't realize Neptune. I, I, I don't know. I just, you know, and again, a lot of these websites I found, unfortunately, were like travel and tourism That's sites. Say, was it unprofessionalengineering.com? Because I wouldn't trust those people. I definitely would not <laughs> trust those people. Uh, but, but they use this as an, as, a, as an observatory because apparently they were really into the astrological calendar um, because 
not only did they use this as an observatory, but they could they could predict uh, solar eclipses yeah. uh, using the uh, the observatory. Uh, they were able to define a three hundred and sixty five. This is this is this is in the five hundred fifty six hundred A.D.s. A three hundred and sixty five day solar calendar because of this observatory. Um, and they know that for sure because El Castillo, we'll talk about specifically, has 365 individual steps that tie to the solar calendar. Yeah. So, um, just interesting stuff that they were able to do with what, which is a mate, which in my mind would be super limited resources and oh, intelligence. Yeah. I mean, they were doing human sacrifice. How smart could they have been? <laughs> Sorry. That felt a little harsh. Um, yeah, maybe a little bit. I mean, you're right. Um, another one, the North Temple also called and this is the only reason i'm mentioning this one it's also called the temple of the bearded man so clearly not going to be my temple ever um this small building is adjacent to the great ball court if you're just you know cruising around the area it features lots of carvings on the interior walls and it has a central figure of a man with a carving under his chin that of course resembles a beard so such it was named uh, they have steam baths as well, so structures that feature a water bath and a steam chamber with heated stones, so like a sauna back in 400 AD. It's interesting. Um, temple of the Warriors, which is another temple. They have a bunch of, like a group of a thousand columns. It's mm -hmm. just a bunch of exposed columns that they think supported like a larger roof that has collapsed since. Um, the two that I saw that were interesting were Temple of the Jaguar, Oh, how cool is that? And then Just they the had, name. and then they had like a, it was called platform of the Jaguar and Eagle. So I think it's where they did some like human sacrifice and some, yeah, some, some, other, some other, they had a couple things. other, yeah, they had a couple other temples or pyramid structures, El Osario and El Mercado, um, both just temples. That's the last of the buildings I had other than the big one, of course, which I think we'll save. Let's and, save that before for now until we get done with this week's luke's rant okay so this rant is really specific to cheats and itza so back in 1999 it's and this is more of just like a story rather than a rant so back in 1999 so uh, be before i got married yeah uh, the good old days yeah <laughs> no <laughs> no i, I take never it back say no. that to anybody no. with my wife able to in hear in the house it. yes um <laughs> So uh, my brother and I went to Cancun for, uh, I don't know, just, just, just a trip, I guess. And we went to Chichen Itza. And when we are getting off the bus, the very first thing, so there's two stories here. So the first thing the guide says is whatever you do, don't feed or pet the dogs. There's lots of stray yeah, dogs. And yeah. I was like, I'm a dog lover. I'm kind of like the dog whisperer, right? I'm <laughs> Is that like, what you are? I'm kind of like the Caesar Milan of Pittsburgh, right? Okay, okay. And um, so there were. There were a ton of stray dogs all over the place because the, two million people visit this place per year um, from a tourism standpoint. So there were dogs everywhere. And we're walking, and this cutest little dog comes up to me, probably like some kind of, you know, hound mix, maybe like 20, 30 pounds little dog. And I... I reach to pet the dog and oh. it loses its mind and starts like snapping and barking and growling. Like, we at told me. you, Luke. And he starts <laughs> chasing me and I'm running around this like 20 the, pound dog. The, the, the group of people from this little 20 pound dog. And finally, and this must happen all the time, the tour guide like yelled something uh, in, in Spanish and took something and took like, I don't know, like a piece of cheese or something out of his pocket and threw it on the ground and the dog stopped. Apparently they know that if they like do like do this, th they're conditioned to like get food and they know how to do this. So, and, oh, and, my and then he yelled at me and said, I told you not to pet the dogs. Like, so, I'm good. I'm done. Did you story, pet any more dogs? I did that? not. I was okay, definitely good job, afraid. Luke. So second quick story. Um, you can't climb El Castillo anymore. Not anymore. Um, no. You up until 2006, you mm -hmm. could climb El Castillo. So when we went, you could climb it. There was a big rope going down the middle of the steps, and if you needed it, you could go, use the rope to go up and down. So me and my brother climbed to the top, got some cool pictures, came down, and we're leaving the area. And all of a sudden, we hear all this commotion behind us, and we turn, and someone was falling down the pyramid 
like I, I I could see a person tumbling like head over heels, and at the bottom there's these big snake heads, and it looked like there they are. ran into the snake head. And two seconds later, an ambulance. So this must the fact that an ambulance was there and waiting. My guess is people fall all the time. So or, or you know heat exhaustion or something like that. Or that dying there. falling down a set of steps. So or they're pretty they steep. got sacrificed. Did you perhaps? climb the steps? No, it was, I think I might have gone in 06 or 07. Yeah, so. yeah apparently in 2006, a, uh, an American tourist fell to their death. Uh, do you think that's the reason, or do you think it's uh, trying to keep the temple from getting destroyed? Maybe probably a little, a little bit. I think it's probably a little bit of both, but I mean, yeah. people die and going. <laughs> it's a kind of a big <laughs> it kinda, deal. It, yeah. it's, it's, it's a little bit of a downer for tourism, just saying. So, so I guess the moral of the story is if you go, don't expect that you get to climb El Castillo. And don't pet dogs. And don't pet the dogs. All right. Uh, El Castillo, Luke. Got to get to El Castillo. want to talk about it. Uh, yeah. So El Castillo is clearly the, uh, the and what I, I, I'm doing terrible on you keeping are. track of the names. El Castillo stands for. The uh, castle. The castle. That's what it is. Um, I bet you could have sounded that one out and figured it out. Uh, I probably could have. Yeah. Uh, so, so El Castillo is the largest of uh, of the temples, and El Castillo. Um, where is that? Where is that? I thought El Castillo. While you're looking, act like I thought that was Chichen Itza. Like, oh, I'm just I gotcha. like, oh, well, that must be what the temple's called because that's what everyone goes to see. Mm -hmm. I guess not. It's also known as the Temple of Kuku. Kukulkan, yeah, K U K U L K A N, mm. Mm. some sort uh, of Mayan deity. I don't know. So I mentioned it before. So El Castillo stands. Uh, I saw roughly a uh, hundred feet tall, mm -hmm. uh, and the base I believe was I think it was two hundred and eighty-seven, two hundred and eighty-eight. I. I, I regardless the base yeah yeah so it, it really wide base uh 100 feet tall which if you think about back then is pretty tall there's 365 steps in total not not just on one side but on each side and there's also steps on the top platform so if you've never seen a picture of this imagine a pyramid that kind of stops and it flattens out and then there's uh, another little box on top of it so it doesn't go to a, a point. Box on top yeah, it doesn't go to a point the way that like we think of like Egyptian pyramids uh, are made. And my guess is it was probably just a difficult engineering feat that the Egyptians were able to figure out and the Mayans couldn't. Um, yeah, probably. They believe they haven't proved this yet, from what I could tell, that there were smaller, older pyramids underneath this pyramid, and they built it on top of it because apparently that happens all the time with pyramids. I, uh, I saw that, that they just as of a handful of years ago, I think it was like 2016 or 2017, they used like advanced imaging technology to look inside of it. They like, they used, did a sonogram on the pyramid basically. And they were like, oh, you have a baby a pyramid in there. Yeah. And there was like a throne room inside of it. And like you're saying, it's not like they went inside and they hung out in this extra chamber. It was mm -hmm. like, this was at the location and then they built the temple over top of it. Uh, the other thing too, uh, about the, uh, the pyramid, and this is, this is the thing that really starts to blow my mind is there are, I think it, I think they said it wasn't every day. I, I, I think I read it was only a couple times a year that a, a shadow of a snake appears on the steps and yeah, connects the to the head yeah. yeah and connects to the head at the bottom of the steps how cool and there's a couple of pictures that, that i've seen where you can see this like twisting shadow that goes down to the bottom uh and connects up with the snake head and apparently it, you, you got to be there the right day of the year and you got to be there you know the right time of day whenever it's happening but it basically casts a shadow of the the snake god that they worshipped uh at the time so that's so neat like the fact that they could do that to match up with the spring and autumn equinox is crazy. But think about the number of people that must be there on those days to see that effect. That's probably pretty significant. Yeah. Um, what else? Do you have anything else about this building? Uh, da, 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 da. No, I have I, a fun have fact a... while you look. Okay, go ahead. All of the buildings of Chichen Itza were connected together by 100 sackbyob i don't know how you say it that's how i'm saying it but these were paved roads okay so what's really cool about this is that kind of like you said 
in Europe, people were still barbarians, which that's a stretch. That's not exactly true. But uh, many of the European cities didn't even have finished streets at this time. Mm -hmm. And here we are in Mexico with all of these paved roads connecting all of the major buildings together. That's pretty awesome. Uh, another thing, too, that, that I saw was uh, n not just the uh, El Castillo, but they painted their buildings, apparently. They did. Lots of pretty colors. Found, which, I mean, it kind of makes sense if you think about, like, probably the access they had to, like, natural, you know, dyes and stuff like that. But apparently sure. they, they believed they were, like... Uh, I'd say what you would think of as are traditionally, you know, Mayan colors. Like they said, like bright blues, reds, greens. Um, you don't see any. You, you don't see any of it today, obviously, because it's you know thousands of years later. Yeah. Uh, so turns out the paint didn't last that long. They needed to use two coats. Um, <laughs> no. There's one more thing that I think we wanted to talk about, and that's the big old water holes, right? Yeah. So what are did those you, called? It's called a cenote. Cenote. So did you go to one of these when you were there? Yeah. Did you jump I, into one? I I don't think we were allowed to. See, I I don't know if I did. I don't know if we jumped into the ones right near Chichen Itza, but uh, there are other cenotes in yeah. and around uh, uh, Cancun. So my brother and I actually did jump into. I bet you weren't allowed, and you just got in trouble, and then dogs no, no, chased no, you again. no. The bus pulled up, and there was platform forms and stuff oh, built okay. specifically for okay. jumping. So, uh, so a cenote uh, is a large well or spring that is below ground. So basically, it's an in-ground pool for for the Mayans. Yeah. yeah. Um, these things nice. are, in, in some cases, hundreds of feet deep. Uh, it was the it was the primary reason they believe that Chichen Itza was uh, built where it was built because there was no fresh accessible water anywhere in the area other than a handful of these really large cenotes that were there which but, then eventually it turned out there were tons of like underground rivers yeah but again those were underground <laughs> and the other thing too is if you think about how like kind of gross this is not only was it their water source yeah. but apparently they did human sacrifice and they verified this. So in the 1900s, yeah. uh, apparently archaeologists like did some dredging of these cenotes and they found like all these like sacrificial stones and daggers and all this stuff. But there was also like tons of bodies that like yeah. were. So you're going to drink the water that you're throwing like Aunt Bessie into? <laughs> Poor Aunt like, Bessie. Come on. Uh, um, yeah, that's pretty gross. That's really disgusting. Maybe that's what uh, happened. Maybe so, they were like, well, our water's so dirty, we're moving. <laughs> so my so my cenote story, we go okay. to this cenote. I don't think it was one of these near Chichen Itza. And uh, there were kids that you would, you know, give them a dollar and they would do like backflips into the cenote off the oh, highest okay. platform. Yeah. Uh, but as a tourist, you could go and jump in. I was like, oh, how, how bad could it be? Um, and as I'm going up, I'm standing at the highest platform and it was only like maybe 28 feet, but still it was 28 feet. And the, the guy says, make sure you land there. And I was like, why? And he's like, there's rocks in the water, of course. And I was like, okay. So I did, I landed and it hurt so bad because I landed, so high. I yeah. landed flat, like on the back of my legs. <laughs> oh my goodness. So yeah, um, that sounds like a terrible idea. And my brother chickened out and jumped off the lower platform that was like, you know, like 10 feet or something like that. I would do 10 feet. I think 28, yeah. I would, I guarantee I would not do. <laughs> um, one good thing about the sacrifices is that when they looked at the remains, the bones had marks on them that indicated that the people were killed before being dumped into there. So like we chop you up and then toss your dead body into the thing as a sacrifice. So at least they didn't drown to death. I guess, I guess that's good. You hope. Right? Yeah. Um, the only other thing I had Luke was what happened to Chichen Itza, Ch Ch chicken pizza. Do you have anything else you wanted to no, talk about? No, I, I, I have a little bit of that. The same thing you're talking about when the Spanish showed up. Well, yeah, so they say, or at least a lot of people say, you know, Christopher Columbus showed up in 1492. We all know about the ocean blue and all that good stuff. And that that kind of, that like Christopher Columbus and other explorers are blamed for Chichen Itza being lost as an important city in the area. But realistically, historians think that this shift kind of happened earlier, like around the mid 1200s, mm -hmm. where for like, quote, some reason, it was decided that they're going to abandon these massive cities and start these smaller like tribal villages instead, which really seems odd. So I, I mean, I don't know if it's 
this is my my astute conjecturing um <laughs> like maybe it was a religious thing maybe it was the end of world coming sort of thing or something like that given all of their beliefs of you know neptune and mm-hmm. astrological stuff but nobody really knows why they abandoned them but it probably wasn't christopher columbus's fault so I also saw that the Spanish showed yeah, up in uh, 1526. Yeah. 1526. Um, and uh, apparently there was a community around the city. And mm-hmm. the Spanish set up a temporary capital there for a little while, they said. Um, but I, I do feel like um, we probably should do something on Christopher Columbus. Apparently, like, everybody loves Did Christopher Columbus. Stuff? No, no, no. But, like, he, you know, I mean, it's not just inventors that we do um you know he discovered the he did discover well, the suppose, new <laughs> my yeah, daughter we're just going to get so much such a hate, my daughter is such a hater on Christopher Columbus cuz apparently yeah. he was a pretty terrible person yeah. um long time so, listener but if you think about it i mean it was probably disease famine war uh you know lack of resources overpopulation i mean it, it, there was a whole bunch of factors i think because it, it doesn't it does seem like it was a really long period from when they it started to decline until basically overgrowth and nothing yeah. existed there so and somehow we lost it for 300 years yeah. and then it came back it feels um, very indiana jones ish it does. so if you didn't have a family and We'll, we'll just say you never had one. We don't want to say something terrible happened. Like if you and I were like single dudes, would you go explore the jungle with me? Like you oh. and I, machete in hand, maybe a rope and like one of those straws to make you drink your dirty water. I like, can definitely see me doing that, but like unless there's like you're a, calling me a liability. Unless Is there's like it? a unless there's like a Hilton or something. Every uh, <laughs> the jungle Hilton. Yeah, I, I can't see you like sleeping in a hammock or a tent it be, or. It could be a Marriott. You're kind of soft. Fine. I don't. I, I I don't see you doing well without running water and. See these uh, talus free hands. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't be a good choice. But you would do it yourself. Oh my goodness gracious! Yes. All right. Um, anything else you wanted to share with? The That's listeners? all I got. I like this one. It was fun. I, I am looking forward to the next six wonders that we cover and how fantastic they are. If any of you want to write in and tell us what one we should be doing next, if you want to tell us your story about falling down the temple stairs, uh, if you pet a dog and got chased, anything like that, why don't you go ahead and email us at unprofessionalengineering at gmail.com. And until next time, see ya.